Oh, Devi, when you defeat Hari in a dice game, you snatch away his flute. When will you throw it to me so that I can hide it somewhere? Notes In a vision, Sri Raghunath relishes Sri Sri Radha Madhavas, Madhavas Vana Vihara and the sweetness of their love songs. And when this vision disappears, he feels great pain. He is completely absorbed in Sri Radharani. Other than she, no one can soothe the pain of his separation. Sri Radha embodies the quintessence of the Ladini Shakti. The Ladini potency makes the Lord Rasika Shekhar, the king of relishers, and gives him the relish of Leela. And when it enters the devotees' hearts, it gives them the bliss of Krishna's devotional service. <clears throat> so that is important here, right? The Ladini Shakti. Gurudev is always uh, teaching us different uh, channels how we can understand Ladini Shakti. One channel that he uses over the many years now is from Srila Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita, the last commentary, where Prabhupada says that the living entity is marginal or tatashta. We have heard this many times. We are in the neutral position as a jiva until we come in our normal position. And the normal position, and that is Prabhupada's last sentence in Bhagavad Gita, is the pleasure-giving potency. So that is actually what we all look for. We want to be normal. Normal means to be always in bliss, right? More or less, to be happy all the time. Like Nitya Ananda means eternal happiness. And that is coming by the mercy of Srimati Radhika. And she appears in different, different forms. Or let's say her love is, you know, going through the whole universe, is through everything. And where there is an opening for this divine love, where the soul wants to connect again, then she is coming as Bhakti Rupini. No, that is Baba also saying that she is giving Krishna his most, you know, sweetest form, let's say like that, because she makes him Rasika Shekara. She is the, that feeling that makes him forget that he is God. And he wants that. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, we have a nice, um, Adi Lila 4, where we have a nice, uh, how do you say, conversation of Krishna with himself. <laughs> he has also some self-talk sometimes, like us. <laughs> Krishna speaks to himself. And he says, oh, I'm not so much attracted to all these hymns and all these prayers that are given in awe and reverence. I'm more attracted to that love that is not afraid of me, that doesn't see me as a God or Almighty, 
I want to relish that love. But then he also says, oh, if I think how to relish this love, I, I, it seems to be also a contradiction in myself because I am the supreme enjoyer. How can I enjoy to be, you know, a lover? And then he speaks to himself like that, or, Ch or Krishna does Kaviraj Goswami, is showing that actually Krishna wants to be like Shimati Radhika. He's thinking and thinking, where is this love that can, you know, make me so happy and make me to forget my divine, you know, Godheadness? And he says, if I think about it, it could be only one person that can help me to relish this love. So Krishna becomes the student of love. He becomes the you know, he who is usually the teacher, <laughs> now who is usually the, the, the person that everyone wants to love and wants to come closer to, he becomes the student and he wants to learn from Srimati Radhika. And that's why this Ladini Shakti is one portion of Srimati Radhika's uh, character, let's say, because she is the three uh, three kinds of uh, portions that we always know what we have learned they are all like uh, ladini samvit and sandini these three portions like the one you know the energy that gives knowledge the energy that is all pervading existence and the energy that is all pervading bliss it's all called the three energies of krishna they are all together, the three energies. So I, the inner energy, and I thought, I thought, wow, that is again that example that the the main portion of that is the Ladini, and that's all coming from Shrimati Radhika, and she gives it to Krishna. You know, she gives herself completely to Krishna when he is, you know, experiencing her love as Chaitanya and wants to dive deeply and become a student of that love. But she also gives it to us. She gives this to the living entities. In a way, we could say it is already in us. No, that is also true. It's the potential that we are love. We are love in its own nature. We are already a piece of love, a piece of the divine. But it needs to be more like revived. So that is so uh, special here that how how uh, that Ladini Shakti, that potency, is giving all the devotees and even Krishna himself the chance to realize their most sweetest form. No, Because love in itself is maybe something that we cannot grab. It's a feeling, right? But when this love becomes very intense in the heart of all of us, and even in Krishna, <laughs> even Krishna is, you know, eager to to feel the everything from the side of love. Then it gives a form, and that form for Krishna is Rasika Shekara. He is the enjoyer of all these sweet loving exchanges, like in Vrindavan with his mother, with his father, with the with his friends, and with all the gopis, and topmost with Shimati Radhika. But also for us, this bliss-giving energy is giving us the eagerness, you know, to, to uh, realize more and more my own loving uh, nature. And that Prabhupada says, and Gurudev is teaching us, is the normal position. This is my normal position. But of course, because I am always thinking I am the body, I am the mind, and this is very natural for me right now, I always easily, I'm living in the mind, I'm living in my senses. And because the mind and the senses are not so completely, you know, let's say, realized about my spiritual normal position, and then it's always a back and forth and ping and pong, like Gurdiv says. The ping and the pong, this is um, our constitutional position in a, in a <laughs> let's say, material 
uh, way. No? But then how we come into our eternal constitutional position as the lover of Shimate Radhika, like we love it. Manjaris, the lover is Krishna, of course. But like we love Shimate Radhika so much that slowly but surely her, her love will be completely, you know, like, um, how do you say, when you cook, you boil it down when you make a ladu. No, when you make a burfi, it has to be condensed. Gurudev always says condensed. So when this comes, then Shimati Radhika, she gives the devotees also the relish of her own love. And that is called the Bhakti Rupini. She comes in the form of Bhakti. And that form also takes on different, different aspects. We know, first of all, she comes as Gurudev in our life. Because he is also this prema rupaya. Hmm? He is also this form of Shimati Radhika's prema. And then it goes on and on and on until myself, I become more absorbed in who I am, you know, as Shimati, uh, Shimati Radhika's Darcy. And that is the powerful, how do you say, um, energy of Ladini Shakti. She gives love to everyone, to the plants, to the living entities, to all the animals, and even to Supreme Lord Sri Krishna himself. Take that. Sri Radhika <clears throat> is the essential portion of that Ladini potency. And she delights both the Lord and the devotees in this way. Within the Lord, she appears as Ladini Svarupini. And within the devotees, she appears as Bhakti Rupini. Just as Krishna cannot find any other gopi but Sri Radha to relieve, relieve him of the suffering of separation from Sri Radha, similarly, no one else but she can soothe the devotee's suffering of separation from her. That is also a very funny point here, isn't it? That we are suffering, we want to come back to Godhead, but actually it's not Godhead that can relieve the suffering. It's Shimati Radhika. It's only love. She can do it. And that's why many devotees, and I have just lately had the experience again, they are still suffering in, in God consciousness. And, you know, Gurdjieff has for many years said this to us, you know, oh, you and your God consciousness. <laughs> and I could not understand it in the beginning. It, it was difficult for me because I think, why, what's wrong that I try to, you know, love Krishna? <laughs> but here it is said that only Shimati Radhika can help Krishna to relieve him of his suffering of separation from her. And also, for us, for me, it's her. And I have to, you know, cry out to her. I have to learn how to come closer to her because she is giving this bhakti in my heart. She is bhakti rupini. She is the very form of the sweetness. And just the other day, we had one exchange with devotees and we want to speak about the how Shimati Radhika is in Lord Chaitanya, right? Because for myself, it was the, the shift to come from Vaidhi Bhakti or this God consciousness to Shimati Radhika's, you know, presence and let's say prominence in Chaitanya. And I, you know, and I realized how good it was working with me maybe for 10 years, you know, and, and, <laughs> And it's not like after we have practiced this God consciousness for so long, sometimes it sticks in the heart, in the brain. No? And then I, we tried to speak about it. We, our desire was 
let's speak about Shimati Radhika today, how she is in Chaitanya. No? But somehow, when the mood of all the listeners is not so completely to listen and to hear, I noticed we end up with Krishna again. <laughs> it's so interesting, you know, because we are so, I mean, there was also especially one devotee who was speaking about Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. And then later on the devotee, I didn't want to be so rude, but then the devotee said, oh, we came, we wanted to speak about Shimata Radhika. <laughs> But it's, you know, when then it's not the same heart's feelings, and we have still so many, you know, conditionings, we end up with Krishna again, <laughs> which is not bad, but it's not that, that relieving of the suffering. It's not uh, giving the smelting heart. It's not giving these feelings. And I thought this was a very interesting experience. And I learn a lot. I learn a lot from this. Very interesting. And I thought, my God, I have to become more, more expert like Gurudev. How to do it? How to, how to change it in myself and also in the others who really want to speak and to hear about Shimati Radhika. And, uh, but, you know, our habits maybe don't allow it. So I thought, I am so lucky that we have here our Radha Dasyam uh, group where we all want to listen about Shimati Radhika. We want to absorb all of her, you know, feelings and, and get into that feeling. That is our goal. And we are so lucky that we can do it here openly with no fear <laughs> and nobody is against it. <laughs> that is. How merciful <clears throat> Sri Guru Deva was to introduce me to the maid service of such a Radharani. How sad that I don't realize this. Instead of the lotus feet of this Radha, I prefer profit, adoration and distinction in this world. This is surely the result of committing offenses for innumerable, innumerable earths. Although I have received the mercy of the saints and my guru, I'm still deprived of it. How unfortunate I am. I could not hear the nectarian words of the saints because of committing offenses. Suffering great separation, Sri Raghunath Das Goswami weeps. Then Swamini mercifully calls him, Tulasi, come. Sri Raghunata sits up and sees another, another transcendental picture. A dice game has commenced in the grove of Sudevi Saki. Sukumari, tender Radhika, could not stand up against heroic Krishna during the water sports the honey drinking play or the swinging pastime. So now the Sakis are finding a means to defeat Nagara Krishna, Nagara Krishna. Fair-faced Krishna sits facing fair-faced Radhika in Sudevi's green grove surrounded by all their loving girlfriends. First, they put Krishna's flute and Radhika's veena at stake. Place these stakes in front of them. Nandimukhi and Vrinda 
are the witnesses and Kundalata is the conductor of the moves of the pawns. Lalita sits on Radhika's side and Madhumangala on Krishna's side as advisors. No one else can interfere by undoing a move already made or vice versa. First, they must open the hands before they can throw. And when someone throws 17 or more, the hand must also be opened. Swamini says, Sundara, you can make the first move. Shyama Sundara throws, but does not open his hand. Swamini shakes the dice between her hands and at the same time she shakes Krishna's minds, mind with her soft smile. At the first throw she immediately scores 17 and she opens her hand. The Sakis exchange meaningful glances with each other and say, We could understand that you would win this game. Oh, you cowherd boy! Just run after your cows with a stick in your hand, saying hi hi to move them. What do you know about dice? During the second throw, Shyama opens his hand. Tulasi sits by Swamini's side in such a way that she can see her face. Swamini is bewildered when she sees Shyama Sundara's sweet form and Shyama Sundara becomes engrossed in gazing at Radha's sweetness. Will he ever see her like this again? There are very few people who love them. There are plenty of people who like to take from God. But there is no one who knows how to give to him. Everyone is busy taking from him. Should I do bachan just for my own pleasure? Or should I forget about my own happiness and distress and do bhajan just to please him with my service? I'm chanting because it makes me happy. While chanting, do I remember he whose bliss knows no bounds when he hears me chanting? I don't mind to introduce myself as a pure devotee, but I'm not aiming at the happiness of my beloved Didi. I'm mainly concerned, concerned with my own happiness and distress. In Srimad Bhagavad we have to... Radhi, sorry. Nobody wants to, to uh, give some feelings on this. <laughs> I think Baba is very much um, uh, straight here. No? He is, uh, he is um, showing how to do our homework, like Gurudev calls it, to self-reflect my motivation, my intention, my mind while I'm chanting, my feelings. Am I still taking? You know, am I still trying to get something out of it for myself just to feel good? I think these are the uh, little bit uh, sobering questions that I ask myself 
when I want to go deeper. Like Rudolf says, not to only swim on the surface of I'm doing it, I try to do it, and, you know, but, yeah, I don't get the desired result. What to do? How to go deeper? Okay, I'm begging for the mercy. <coughs> and often I am stuck in kind of this desire for position or adoration, like Baba says. No? I don't mind to introduce myself as a pure devotee, but I'm not aiming at the happiness of my beloved deity. So that is uh, some pledge for honesty. And the, and the Radha Dasis, what I find, they try always to be very oft honest with each other and also in our Zooms. Maybe not here when we are the big groups, but also sometimes during the week when we have the small Zooms, when there's only like 10 or 12. or Then there's the room also to be honest about my bhajan, where I am standing or in exchange with my friends, where I like to improve. And we know that the grace also of the devotees, they can, you know, they can help me to come to the next level in my bhakti. How to go deeper, how to feel the love of Srimati Radhika in every living entity and in myself and how to connect with it, not only here in this world, but everywhere also, especially in the Leelas. These are not, uh, how do you say, separated. The Leela is going on every moment. And I try to somehow connect with the Leela. But what is my obstacles? I have to also look at them and try to improve. That is uh, what Baba is giving here. And I feel these are very, uh, very helpful thoughts. Maybe someone else would like to share on it. Please help us to grow in our love. Sushimati <laughs> Radhika, all devotees, give us your grace. Give me your mercy. <laughs> Nobody is in sharing mode today. Oh my God. I feel unfortunate. So what I feel uh, uh, during reading this, uh, this uh, part, you know, I feel very unfortunate actually. I, I can... Uh, understand that a lot of year I was making mechanically things for my pleasure actually that I feel good during and uh, it's coming some question but is it possible also to do raga bhakta to feel good um, because uh, uh, he, he said uh, um, does I make to feel good or to do the service for them so, um, remembering of the past times, uh, it, it can be also, this is my question also, it can be for my pleasure, or it is all included, that it, this is the service. Maybe in the beginning, just to enter in the mood to fix my Ishta Deva. But after that, uh, is it possible to remembering in the past times, of Radha Mohan with enjoying mood which is separated from the serving mood. This is my question. If you can answer or say something. Thank you so much. Thank you, Maharani. That's very uh, very uh, beautiful point. Uh, 
our Dainiti Prabhu is, is opening here. How to detect if my my endeavor to to connect with the Leela or connect with you now entering into bhajan is even then contaminated by some impure desires, no? My God, maybe Goranga Sundara knows. I have not so much access to that. <laughs> maybe Goramani help us. I, I, for myself, if if you want me to be honest, you know, I don't want to make a show here because you know Baba is just telling us don't make a show. You know, don't try to put yourself as if you know something. So I can say that. Um, I don't even think about it. I try to get into it somehow, some feelings. I'm just begging for mercy. <laughs> and I try not to uh, try to be in the right mood. But usually for myself, it comes to me like some mercy comes to me. It's like a shower of mercy when I feel that I am uh, connecting now or something is coming, some some feelings, some pictures, some opening of the heart it's a difficult question for me that's all i can say then i just pray all to the devotees to open up about this and share more it's a very interesting question actually when i read these lines i also felt caught like oh yes actually i i want to go to vrindavan but i do do I really want to go to Vrindavan because I want to do service? Because I actually can do service here as well. Um, and then I, for somehow I feel okay. Yeah, it's not. It's still my own desire. I want to go to Vrindavan to be closer to Guru Dev, to be closer to Radha Mohan, to be in an easier situation to do service. It's easier to feel it, but there is still. still my my own personal desire so for myself i had to like acknowledge and um accept okay that's the level i am and i can try to to improve but i also have to acknowledge that that i don't it's it's not it's it's not just only for Radha Mohan or it's not only for the service because the service i could do everywhere so it's very nice, Diane Edi, that you that you ask this because I think um, it's a good point. But it's also good if we feel it, then we can progress. Or I, at least for myself, I feel then I can progress if I at least start to distinguish the different states. My feeling is, if I can say, uh, just that. Uh, trying to remember it, to fix the mind uh, in lovely lovely mood is already biggest service actually if we can be there by mind then really we can do some service so um, for me personally is is very um, I'm the same things to remembering lovely with with uh, with heart fixed in our ishtadev like a service so maybe also for sure there is more levels but uh, at this level uh, i feel that this is maximum what i can do now i don't know others if somebody can help more thank you so much Anyone else, or I should read further? So, wait, wait, go around the sooner you opened your mic and then you close it again. I saw you. <laughs> he wants to, yes, I cannot hear you. Your mic is uh, you off. I, I don't know. Now it's okay, that's better. Yes, yes. All right. Ah, yeah, because it's felt. My mic is felt. Sorry, I just opened the mic to tell you. Yeah, you you already said very nicely. You know, 
And uh, the point is that uh, this is the sadhana bhakti. We shouldn't accept this level. And this is the sadhana bhakti. It's not a uh, level of perfection. This is the first of all. And very honestly, very sincerely, like you said, we should understand that we have to dig inside of us. And this is the struggling. Yes, this is the truth. This is the struggling of Sadaka, who knows what is his goal. If someone is not fixed in his goal, then he doesn't have this kind of struggling. But if you know what is your goal, immediately you can recognize what is the blockages to attain that goal. And the more devotee is sincere in attaining the goal, he will be more even more and more and more aware of all these blockages. So he has to be very honest, patient with himself, and to accept that these blockages are not the blockages of his soul, but this is the blockages of his abnormal condition. <laughs> yeah. And this is anartha, actually. And because of that anartha, I am making so much offenses. Soul doesn't make offenses. Spiritual identity doesn't make offenses. My bodily consciousness makes offenses, has completely wrong expectation from spiritual life. And it's a very nice question, which really the Anidiji asked, because in... On the sadaka level, still, the measurement of our spiritual advancement is how am I happy? And we need the shift of consciousness. And if I'm practicing bhajan, if I'm practicing seva, different kinds of seva, bhajan is also seva, and I feel very relaxed, very nicely, happy, then I think in myself, oh, I am advancing. But when disturbances from outside world comes, and I cannot enter in the mood of seva, proper mood, proper shravanam, proper bhajan, then I say, no, no, I am so useless. This world is so heavy and cruel. I don't know what to do. I, I start to complain to myself also. And this is the sign, actually, that something is very wrong in my consciousness. That I am still depending on my happiness and my distress. That's the point. So, we need mercy, because no one who is conditioned can overcome this condition, this circle. Of conditioning life, we need someone who is outside of that circle who can help us. But, and he is always here to help us. The problem is that I'm not proper receiver of that help. So, this is my struggling, constant, every day, struggling to change my attitude, to change my consciousness, which is actually mostly still based on the bodily consciousness of life. And this is the truth. But if I have a goal, if I have at least the whiff of desire to attain that goal in the form of Radhika's maidservant, then very peacefully, it's very interesting, very peacefully, I will accept all my wrong behavior and wrong consciousness. Why I say very peacefully? Not in the sense that it's okay, that's very wonderful. No, I know, but this is not me. This is not me. This distress is not influencing my soul, especially my Swarup. This happiness in this world also 
There is nothing with my soul or my sorrow. And this kind of consciousness is something which we have to develop. And the, my conviction is that when Radhika, Nitai, Goranga, Go, uh, Guru, they see my sincerity, although I am failing, then they will give more me ability to receive their mercy. And no psychology will help me. No coaching will help me. No positive thinking will help me. No health life will help me. No money, no anything. Position like you said, that Baba is saying here, nothing from this material world will help me. But I am not a thing. And because of this, I cannot enter deeply in the bhajan. Before the stage of acceptance, we cannot go in a dhyan. It must be clear. We can practice, and we should do that. But don't make concoction that I am in dhyan, in deep meditation. I am speaking for myself. But still, I didn't accept so many things before dhyan before med deep meditation. And it must be clear. And Baba is giving here like a doctor. He's giving diagnosis of someone who is deeply under the anartha, which is not valuable. This body, this consciousness, it's not valuable. We can use it like a good tool to repair the car. But the, the point is the car, not the, the tool. The point is the soul, and body is the tool to attain perfection through sadhana. And this is difficulties, which saints, saintly person, they want to very clarify to us, so that we don't become pretenders. This is the worst thing, actually, what, this is the cheating mentality of the conditioned soul. This is one chan. This is cheating mentality. I'm cheating, first of all, myself, and then I'm trying to cheat others. If I'm very successful in cheating myself, most probably I will be quite successful in cheating the others. <laughs> you know? Yeah, this is the way how condition life is going on. And like you, Suniti, and I'm so happy to see Maharani and other older persons, must be, they have experience about this. How they, we cheat ourselves and how we are trying expertly to cheat the others. So same technique we are infusing in our spiritual life. And like you said, Sunit, it's very nice. Only this kind of association we can talk about this. I cannot talk with my neighbors here in my <laughs> house or about this. But with someone who really is in the dead tune, we can open our hearts. Otherwise, it's very difficult. I mean, many things can be said. It's not, you know. The point is that my happiness in my material life is not the measurement, proper measurement for success in my spiritual life. And the Anidiji said, in the beginning, I am happy because I am meditating on Lila Smara. Yes. But suddenly, something happens that I am not happy. And in that moment, from the beginning, devotees should start, honestly to say, frankly to say, to connect his feelings with the feelings of Nitya Siddha Manjaris. Because in their hearts is the pure love, and when happiness appears in their hearts, it's different happiness than from my heart. And when distress appears in their hearts, 
This is different distress. The problem is that we want like sadhakas to meditate directly to Radharani. And we don't have sufficient sukritis for that. And Baba very nicely in, in uh, Vilapa Kusumanjali is saying, we should connect our thoughts, feelings, and action with those who are already on the perfect stage of life. Then all the problems which are coming in the life of Sadaka will be minimized first, first minimized, and then slowly, step by step, they will vanish and vanish and vanish. Until the moment Bhava completely pervade existence. And the Bhava level, Rati level, is actually real liberation from the bodily consciousness of life. Up to that, up and down, left and right, more up and down, more left and right, but if I have a goal, I know where to again come again. And Krishna very nicely said, Sunitiji, you will know that, I think from Bhagavatam somewhere, I forgot it, he said, my devotee, who is very attracted to my loving pastimes, in the same times, because of some desires which, we sti which he still have in the heart, he's getting out from this mood. He's trying to fulfill his desires, subtle or gross. But because he's attracted to my loving pastimes, he again coming back. And this is my devotee. So for me personally, it's quite encouraging. Yes, very nice. The effort is seen and felt and uh, acknowledged. Because otherwise, easily uh, I can get trapped in negativity. <coughs> when I think, oh my God, I have so many desires, I'm hopeless case. But at the same time, the attraction is there and the, the hope. And that also, we can again connect with that hope that even though I see my dark spots or my blind spots, but Shimati Radhika looks on me with more love than my condition and position. She has more love and more mercy, and Gurudev has more love and more mercy, and all the Vaishnavas have more love and more mercy. Why? Because we are learning to see the good, to see not that which is not so useful. But for myself, I look at which one useless things I would like to work on. But others who love me, and these are, you know, the merciful Vaishnavas and Gurudev and Shemati Radhika and all her dasis, they see the good, they see the effort. And like this, you know, the connection becomes stronger and stronger and also the positive will be more and more and more um do you say that sickness will come in my bhakti and the other things will fall become lesser fall away and become lesser mm. i'm sorry that uh, i remember last year i think that uh, maharani was reading also, uh, uh, not from the beginning of Vilapa, and both of you and me, we were giving, trying to give some sharings. And I remember it was uh, some sharing and question, I forgot, but we were talking about this, how on these levels, on sadhana bhakti, we should understand in a very simple way, up to prema, up to up to Baba, actually, 
that anarthas will be always present. And Vishwana Chakra Thakur is giving nice example, and he's saying on the Nishta level, so this is the firm, <laughs> quite steady level, anarthas are present, unwanted, impure desires. They are present 50-50% in the heart. You remember? Maybe you don't remember, but you, you remember Vishwana Chakra Thakur. <laughs> so, what does it mean 50-50? This is a very good stage, actually. 50-50 means I see my anarthas. I see all of them. And this is already success, that I see them. Another point is, he is explaining very nice. They are present in the heart. They didn't vanish. But why they are 50-50? They are not make big obstacles for further advancement. Because devotee knows his goal. He is nishta because he has fixed his goal. And then he said, Ruchi is coming, taste is condensing, condensing, condensing. The more Ruchi is condensing Anarthas, Ruchi is squeezing Anarthas. And then came to the Ashakti stage, attachment to the Ishtadev. Very attach, it's not attraction, it's attachment. You know, when you are attached with someone, then all your senses, all your heart, all your mind is actually focused on that person. Still, Anarthas are there. And he is giving example of mathematics also. 75% person is liberated from Anarthas, but 25% are still there. Because connection with the body is still strong. Heart develop attachment, addiction to Ishtadil. But connection with the body is a still strong. And then on the Bhava level, in the beginning stage of Bhava level, devotee has clear vision of his identity. He has clear vision of his Ishtadev, clear vision, not foggy, clear vision. He is identified with his spiritual identity and everything what's going on, but still, in the beginning stage of Bhava, 10% of Anarthas are still present. But he knows how to deal with that. That's the point. On 50-50% devotee also knows, recognize them honestly, and he knows how to deal. He knows that only Ruchi can save him from this horrible situation. On Ashakti level, he knows how to deal with his anarthas, especially on the Bhava level in the beginning stage of Bhava. Later on, no, but in the beginning stage. Of so, why I'm talking this, I, I'm sorry that I also took a time, because I already took a lot of time before, <laughs> many years, to console myself and to see that everything what is bad in myself actually is normal. I don't have to make a big deal with that. But just continue to condense, to develop your ruchi, your ruchi, your ruchi through bhajana, through sadhu sanghas, ruchi, 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 just don't complain about your misbehaviors and so on, just continue. And I see great support in Gurudev who is pushing us. He doesn't look on our mistakes. He is pushing us where? In bhajan, practically. Seva, bhajan, anyway.
Uh, Goravani opened the mic. I see. I saw him now. Rade, Rade. Thank you all so much uh, to go on this point deeper. I think it's a very, very important point for our life. Um, you know, I, I, I have one verse which I really like in this connection, just to make the base of the whole situation. And this verse is Bumia Apona Lova Yu Kamano Buta Eva Chahankara Itiyame Bina Prakriti Ashtadha. It is said from the cross elements, earth and so on, comes to the fine elements, which is mind, intelligence and false ego. So these are the eight elements which are separated from our self, from our real self. That means they belong to the body. As long we are in the bodily consciousness, we think that our intelligence is the highest energy and this intelligence will help us. That's a mistake. That's a great mistake. Although it's a subtle element. <laughs> we forget Ahankara because Ahankara is more fine than intelligence, so Ahankara is in intelligence. So that means our false ego is influencing our intelligence. So the poison is in now, that's it. When the false ego is influencing, then you are looking for your pleasure in bhajan also. You think, ah, you know, now I'm living in Germany and it's very cold. I should go to Bindavan. It's more warm and it's more nice there. And it's also very spiritual to be in Bindavan like this. It could be a concept. Of course, it's good to be in Bindavan, no doubt about this. But if you are doing it because of this motivation, then your false ego is actually the driving force. And the driving force will lead to the end. Still, you, wake, you will make advancement in Vrindavan, no doubt about this. So we can see we are in trouble if we depend on our intelligence. We may know so many verses, we may, may know so many Shastras, we may be on the first place of all preachers or whatever, you know. That doesn't mean anything. Really, nothing. What really is important is that we, helpless as we are, because we cannot help ourselves, because the false ego is in the intelligence, so what else we have to help us? What we have and what will help us always is the only element who helps us all the time. If we think we are in spiritual life or not, it helps us anyway. It's the mercy of Radharani. It comes down, especially now, our Darya Lila means Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is giving all really all, the whole broadness of the mercy of Radharani. Our Darya Lila brings the whole mercy of Radharani to us. So we are in a very, very good position, but only if we understand that we cannot help us, we need to have a person who is on the level, who understood that this Audarya will help us and nothing else, and who is actually connecting us with this Audarya. So if we cannot connect ourselves, which in the beginning is not possible, then we need someone who connects us. 
If we are then connected with that energy, then by the time we can keep this connection by the mercy. Always we have to stay in that humble mood to understand that it is mercy and we are doing nothing for it. We can chant 64 rounds, 108 rounds. We can chant whatever we want, all Shastras. We can have so many intelligent things in our head. It doesn't help. If we don't take the mercy, which actually is the driving force. So in our daily life, for me, I can't just talk for me. It's like this. I'm in a position here. I cannot go to Bendaven many times because not so much money, not so many time, not so much possibility. But I'm not sad about this or thinking about this because I see also that is the mercy of Radharani. She wants me to do seva here. Now she wants me to do seva more here. That's my good luck. And this makes me happy. Not that I'm in good circumstances, that I am where I want to be. No, I'm here because Radharani wants me to be here. So let me serve as good as I can. But let me be aware, wherever I am now, true to the circumstances of life, there is my seva. It's not there where I am not. It's not that I have to become some circumstances to serve. No, here are the circumstances to serve. Right now, here. I'm here now, so open my eyes and look. Where's the seva? Ah, kitchen has to be cleaned. It's Radharani's kitchen. Aha, car has to be washed. It's Radharani's car. Aha, neighbor, give him some prasadam. It's Radharani's mercy. She wants to give prasadam to everyone. Find some reason to give him. Ask him for help. And then you give something back that's natural. He will not ask, why are you giving me something you cooked yourself? He will understand, ah, yes, I did some seva. He's giving something back. Yes. So wherever you are, there's the seva. And actually it is so natural that usually we oversee it. We think we should go somewhere and it has to be something great or something. No. Love is humble. Love is everywhere. And love acts from any corner. So let us be the help of Radharani and serve from any place we are in any simple way. It doesn't have to be great. It is great in itself, that's for sure. But it doesn't have to look great because it is already the greatest and the greatest doesn't need any big packages. To give Brahma is the highest thing, the highest seva, the highest thing you can give. And you are already in the highest position. That's for sure. So I see it very practical. Where we are and what we are, this is our seva. You are artist, okay? Do this seva for Radha. You are a baker, yes? Bake for Radha. Distribute prasadam. You repair cars. Yes, repair cars with the love of Radharani in every detail. And people will like you, praise you. And in this way they will praise Radha. Whatever you do, just connect it with Radha. It's so simple. And don't ask if this is happiness for you, because then you will get the most happiness.
so I'm sorry. It's a very simple view, but that's all I can say. Rade, rade. I want to say, I'm always say it is a crying school, this Zooms. I've never ever had another experience. And thank you so much for this mercy. I have never ever in any incarnation and also not in this life make this experience to share really love to everyone what you say, Garavani, and all you are say, Garanga and Suniti and I can always surprising what happened in my life and I'm so very thankfully. Really, I can say make seva to everyone and now we make jokes <laughs> together when I in any circumstance I can ever give seva in in lay down in the bed, stay up, or make a journey go to the family, go to Vrindavan, it's, it's equal, it is equal. 24 hours I'm thinking, okay, I must go to Vrindavan, this is the highest blessing for me, I was only two times in Vrindavan, one time two months in last year and then two weeks, it is not so much time, but every second I drinking with my ears and my hands and it is a it's not a, a, I must love a Garanga, you say, a little uh, mathematically, practically 20%, uh, uh, 30%. I, I like this. I have a very, uh, in, uh, I have a, uh, uh, I like mathematics. <laughs> only in a practice. No, only in a practical way. It's so helpful that we have in the head this, 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 this intellect. Not this is, I cannot so good English. The thinking, oh, I'm not so good. This is two two ways. With Radharani, I make the experience. She opened the doors when I give everything up. And and my purification with this also with this diagnosis is in the brain. The much my body make okay my circumstance, but it is a purification here in this brain. All my thoughts go out over healthy eating, healthy living, healthy this or this. This is a wandering thing, and I'm so thankfully all of you to be in this communi co co community, in this Radha Dasya. Thank you very much. Rade, Rade. Thank you so much, Rajeshwari. I was just remembering another point which may be useful also. When we do this simple seva, then usually out of the mercy, Guru Manjari and up to Radharani, the whole line will actually inform us about our shortcomings. How they are doing it with the help of mirrors. When you look in the mirror, you see the pickle in your face, isn't it? You see the red spot in your face if you look in the mirror. So the mirrors are actually other persons you meet. You are performing your service and other people you meet. And they will say something to you. And then don't think it has nothing to do with you. Just accept. Ah, this is a response from Guru Manjari, from Radharani, some feedback. Once 
when I was on Sankirtan. I was not often on Sankirtan, to be honest, very rare. But once I was out and I asked some person, would you like to buy some book? It's about spiritual life and it will help you. And this person actually said, no, no, leave me alone, like this. Then he came back, he grabbed the book and said, okay, you're distributing it free, so now I will keep it, but I will not give anything. I said, okay, it's up to you. You don't need to give. If you read it, you can have it, but please promise to read. Then he changed his mood and he said, you know, I had some contact before with another of you. So another Sankatan devotee. <laughs> but I felt that he has no interest in me. He just wanted to sell a book. That's why I was like this in front. But now, now I understood you really have interest in me. I said, well, we distribute usually these books to inform people about the possibility to make advancement in self-consciousness and come up to spiritual life. Yes, now I can feel, but first I could not. And you shouldn't be so arrogant, you people. In this moment I realized there was one sound which would like to express something, you know, like, what is, who is this guy, you know, <laughs> what he's talking about? We are arrogant, he's arrogant now. But then there was another voice inside who said, no, no, just stay calm, you are arrogant. You have to learn, he's right. And this I never forget, because actually it's true. Even if a dog is barking at us, it could be because we are arrogant. It could be that we don't recognize that maybe this dog wanted to have a sweet word from us, maybe some Hare Krishna, if we pass by. We know that our Gurudev, Radharani, is in every heart of every living entity. So the mirrors are everywhere. So if we see our shortcomings in the mirrors of others, that's our bhajan. That's part of our bhajan. We should be aware. And then the next step is, oh, thank you. Now I understood something. But I don't know how to help myself, so please, Guru Manjari, please, Radharani, take this arrogance from me. But then be prepared that something can happen which you don't like. And you have to go to some phase of some phase of your life which you may not like so much. some hard time. But after that hard time, this part will be gone. Then you will see the next part. And this is actually when we talk about anartas. Bad habit. So see the anartha and offer it. Offer it to Radharani, offer it to Guru Manjari. See it and offer it. If you cannot see it, like Goranga was talking about, so then wait, because Gurudev will make you attentive to that. But he will also give you the Shakti at one day that you can see it yourself. And then we should accept that as our seva.
because this is our real bhajan, like Oranga Sundara said. This is our real work to come more, more near to Brahma. Offer our shortcomings like flower garlands or flowers in the arati. And believe me, Radharani wants them more than any flowers. Really. She is more happy if we offer an artas. She loves them to be offered. And she will take them. And she will be so happy. Jai Shri Radhe. In Srimad Bhagavata, it is seen that Bali Maharaj gave everything to the Lord and just remained his gatekeeper. The gopis are the greatest devotees. The gopis don't consider their own happiness and distress. Their pure love makes them act just for Krishna's pleasure. For Krishna, they gave up everything. Their pure love causes them just to act for Krishna's happiness. And Sri Radharani is again the greatest all of them. because she delights all of Krishna's senses with her beautiful attributes, Sri Radhika shines like Sri Radhika alone. She cannot be compared with anyone else indeed. Because they have taken shelter of Sri Radhika's lotus feet, this great love is also infused in the maid servants. They don't know anything else in this world but the happiness of the divine couple. Sri Raghunath Das Goswami prays to Sri Rupa Manjari in his Sankalpa Prakash Stotra. O oh, Saki Rupa Manjari, may Sudevi teach me the art of thy playing when the divine couple plays at dice in the assembly of fair-eyed girls born in Gokula. With the words of my eyes I shall declare my Sri Nata, beautiful mistress, to be the winner. Swamin is completely bewildered when she sees Shyama's moon-like face. And Shyama makes some noise to distract her. At that moment, Tulasi gives Swamini a hint with her eyes and Swamini wins. As soon as Shyama loses, he picks up his flute. Swamini tries to take the flute away, saying, Give me your flute. But Shyama does not want to give it. 
He is Rasika Shekhar. He wants to play a little bit. He won't hand over the flute. So Swamini tries to grab it from him. They both start pulling at the flute. And Swamini says, I've won. Why don't you give me your flute? Your flute is very naughty. It spoils everything. I will throw it into the Yamuna. Shyama hides his flute behind his head. So Swamini throws herself on Shyama with her full weight and snatches it away from him, making him relish an extraordinary spiritual flavor with her Vamya Bhav, attitude of opposition. First, I give you something that you desire, and then I will take your flute. I will immerse you in the ocean of bliss by snatching the flute from you. That's Swamini's mood. Can you imagine Shyama Nagara's condition then? He loosens his grip on the flute, so Swamini has the chance to snatch it from his hand and throw it to Tulasi, who quickly hides it somewhere. In this way, Swamini steals the flute by enchanting Shyama. There must have been some enchanting herb on her breasts. The Swamini is known as Jaya Shri, the beautiful goddess of victory. The Sakis and Mancharis lean against each other, laughing and laughing. When our hero comes back to his senses, he sees that he lost his flute and he says, Where's my flute? Sri Radhika says, Who knows? You were defeated, but you didn't hand it in. We don't know where your flute is. Shyama Surely you must have taken it. Swamini chokingly says, Why should I? You think we are a shortage of fire we are at a shortage of firewood at home? And if even if we were short of wood, which this much mood we cannot even heat up some milk. Why then should we take your small bamboo flute? And she meaningfully looks at Lalita, who is then immediately searched by Krishna. Lalita blinks as Vishaka. So Krishna goes up to Vishaka and feels if she has the flute on her body or not. Thus look, Krishna looks for his flute on all the eight sakis and all the mancharis starting with Sri Rupa Manjari. Thus Krishna looks like a blue swan relishing all the golden lotus flower, gopis, in the nectar ocean of Sudevi's growth. There's no limit to their ecstasy. Suddenly the vision vanishes and Raghunath Das prays. Oh Sri Radhe. Jai Shirate. I was just hanging by the point, the full weight. 
When Krishna is hiding the flute in the back, Swamini is drawing herself with full weight of Krishna. What does it mean? Full weight of what? Her body? Her body is made out of Mahabhav. The full weight of Mahabhav is Madanakya Mahabhav. And all that aspects of that kind of Mahabhav at once can only have one result. The hero faints. He cannot take that weight of that Mahabhav. He is losing his senses. He cannot hold the flute anymore. He cannot hold his consciousness even. He is completely losing himself in that Mahabhav. He is overwhelmed. That's why it is possible to snatch the flute in that position, in this moment, and hide it. And the mandris are always eager to help Radharani in that moment. Why they are so eager? Because then it can be seen that Radharani is Jai Shri. She always wins the battle. Her Mahabhav is the highest. Not even Krishna can take that. She will always win. She is more intelligent, more lovely. She has all the attributes of Krishna in herself because Krishna actually gets them from her. So she's always Jai Shri. She will always win. And this actually, the mandris also say in the beginning, we knew you would win. We knew it because we know who you are. You are Jai Shri. So it's such a wonderful, sweet scene. And the full weight of Mahabhav is drawn from Radharani herself in this moment on Krishna. And this is actually what he wants. So he is completely satisfied and that's why all the mandris and all the sakis, whoever is there, everyone giggles and is in complete ecstasy because Krishna is in complete ecstasy. So what a wonderful moment. Jai Shri Radhe. And also this Jai Shri Radhe, she is not miserly because by her victory, she makes him search all of the gopis <laughs> and all of the mandris. <laughs> and he is like a blue swan in all the golden lotuses. Thank you. So this is Gopal Mantra or Krishna Mantra. When devotees are remembering this Lila, immediately they connect this with Gopi Jana Vallabha and also Radha Vallabha. So we can see here how the mantras are not different, Diksha's mantras are not different from the Lilas, from the name, different appearances of the hero and heroines, and it's not different from different kind of qualities. When we put together in the lila, then mantra, we will be very alive. 
And when we practice bhajan, just on this lila, on the small part of that lila, it can give us relishment. And in that moment, in that particular moment, it will be not present any anartha. Even in Sadakavesh. Because the heart and the mind are so absorbed in this charming pastime, loving pastime, there is no place for false ego. So, practically, we can, in our daily life now, now, in this moment, and 1 and 30, <laughs> now is 135, we can realize, actually, that our anarthas are not obstacles if we were listening and relishing very nicely what Maharani was reading nicely, but also Baba gave such a beautiful lila to read and meditate. We are the proofs now, not before, not in the future. Now I will sit. Everyone who could listen this lila in this moment, he was free from anartha. Because otherwise, we cannot relish it. Rather. Guranga Sundara. So, just to clarify something. Uh, so, this relishing, in, in that moment we are free of anartha. So, this relishing is very different than what we said in the beginning to hear, listen the lilas or make bhajan for our uh, pleasures. Right? Is it okay? Yes, but it depends on devotee from person to person. If someone connected his heart, first of all, with manjaris who are witnessing that, and Gauravani explained how they manage all this dice game, and Baba explained, then this kind of ananda is not ananda which is coming from false ego. But if I, like a Goranga Sundara, try to enjoy the lila, then I have a big problem. <laughs> but if I try and just went in the flow of the mood of manjaris, in my spiritual identity, then the happiness which I feel, joy, it's completely different. This is purifying the heart and also increases the bowel. Depends from person to person. How we are using our time during the practice, the quality of our proper listening is the all subject of consciousness. And then many things can be revealed, like Gauravani picked, and Suniti picked the point, you know, the, this is the art of listening, to pick the small detail it means the heart it means that heart is opening to receive this eternal bliss and sometimes in this eternal bliss there is happiness but also distress and at the same time this is the bliss <laughs> to pick the details details i'm sorry my english is so useless details it means that devotee is, has already ruchi, 
and he is condensing, condensing, condensing. He is inspired to condense more, and especially when he is in the association of similar persons in the feeling similar, then it's much more relishable. That. Gauranga Sundara enlightened us, and also Gauranga himself enlightened us on this point. When he was actually in his Gambira Lila, there was also one point when he himself described, you know, after was uh, after he was picked up again from the ocean, from the fisherman, and he actually explained. I was just standing there and watching the scene, and they were all serving Radharani and Krishna there. So he is now in this position, which we are now. He's just observing the scene, and in this moment, he feels like one mantra is standing there, first of all, observing everything to get used to it, and then maybe in the future make a little seva, like picking some flowers or something like this. So actually we can see that everything Goranga gave to us, because Goranga is, after all, Radharani, and she is giving everything to us. So what we, what we are doing now is, like Goranga Sundara said, we are not in any Arnathas in that moment, because we try to be in our Bhava Deha. We want to be there, a Sita Deha. This is our goal, to serve in that body. So we have to start to go there inside, in that moment when we hear from that great souls who are already there, then we can go with them on the hand. They will take us at the hand. Come on, come with me. I show you. Just look. Like this it is. You like it? Oh yes, I like it. You want more? Yes, yes. Okay. Come next time. Next Zoom meeting. Come again. I will take you again by the hand. So in this way, the Bhava Deha is growing more and more. And all the other things will go back more and more. But this is not our focus. It's not our focus to lose things, to get rid of things. Our focus is grow our Bhava Deha. So just focus on that. How to grow our Bhava Deha. That's our viewpoint. And all the rest will come by itself, by the mercy. It's just mercy. It comes alone if we are just open for it. Even if we don't want it, really, because sometimes devotees are a little bit like, hmm, I don't know, I'm not so secure. <laughs> anyway, just throw your attention in that kind of lila and then by the time it's like a whirlpool, it will draw your attention very deep. It will just take it by itself. That's mercy. I'm sorry, Maharani. Now we have practical example how smarana can be powerful. Our own experience. We have, we already got this experience. How smarana can be so powerful that take out us from all these disturbances of material world. 
And we should remember that. This is our value. This is the jewel of our own experience, own realization. And depends on each devotee how he was able to be concentrated, focused, absorbed in this lila which Maharani was reading. Some devotees, they were listening maybe not so nicely because of different reasons, tiredness and I don't going in that. But some devotees, they were listening very, very focusing and completely absorbed. And what they saw in the, on the screen of their mind and heart, they saw Lila. They saw that. And those devotees who had more attachment for Radharani and more realization of their Manjari Baba, they see details of that Lila. Because they accept it. They are not inimical to Lila, to Radha Krishna, to Bhakti. They are not inimical. They accept it. Yes, this is actually the reason why I became devotee. And this is the reason why I want to stay devotee. I want constantly to relish this kind of association. I want to constantly relish this kind of kata, smarana, shravana, and so on. Nothing else. Everything else I already have enough in my life. But I miss this one. So this is the value of association with devotees in a similar mood. But it's not easy. We should also practice. We cannot take it like a granted. We have to make some small endeavor in that direction. I want to give others my proper listening. Because if I properly listen with emotions, my energy will spread to this Zoom. <laughs> I don't have to say anything. I have to, I, I can have a closed eyes even. But my heart will emanate the same mood which is Baba is infusing us here or Gurudev. And in that way, I'm helping for the pleasure of other devotees. This is my seva to them. My proper listening is my seva for Radharani Mohan, for Gurudev, Guru, Sadhu, Vaishnavas. But Vaishnavas who are present now here, my friends. So audience is very important, Suniti said. We couldn't share about Radharani because audience was not so tuned. And we should learn how to tune our instrument. Everyone who was playing instruments, you know, at first I have to learn how to tune. C, C, C. Uh, no, now is the C. E, E, E. Uh, 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 now is the A. But it took time. And this is Sankirtan. Right. This is Sankirtana. Sankirtana is only going when the same mood is. Sankirtana is not no mood. This is religious practice. San, san Kirtana, with full devotion, with full heart, in proper staiba. And when the person who is leading Kirtan is in the mood of staiba, my desirable mood, then he is pulling me, my crazy wild mind, 
He is pulling me. In. Come here, my dear brother, and focus on Radharani, which I am focusing. Otherwise, if Kirtaniya is making apparatus, all others who are singing are making apparatus. And we remember Appa, Radha means without Radha. Because only with Radha we are happy. Without Radha we are not happy. Goranga Sundar reminded me, I, I got this picture like when Radharani is the full moon shining spotlessly and then there is a description, all the mandris around her are like moons themselves. And all in all it looks like a marketplace full of moons. So this is Sanketan. When the one moon, the original moon, is enlightening other moons, and then a full marketplace of moons is spreading more and more. This is real Sankhita. Thank you all so much. Jai Shri Rani. Suddenly, the vision vanishes and Sri Raghunatha prays, Oh Sri Rade, Rasamai, when you play dice with the king of Rasikas in the Kunja, all the Sakis that shine like a host of moons surround you. When can I witness that pastime? You are both full of nectarian flavors. Neither one of you is inferior. Therefore, you are named Kalavati, the artful girl, and Kalaguru, the teacher of all arts. When you cleverly exchange his glances, speak and make gestures while you throw the dice, Cupid is defeated. O oh, Dani, fortunate girl, you are so expert at play that you become victorious in all respects. When you see that Vamshidar, Krishna, is defeated, you forcibly snatch his flute away just for some rustic fun and hand it to me. On your indication, I blissfully hide the Murli, Murali flute, Murali flute and the Sakis clap their hands when they see that Hari cannot get it back, despite an elaborate search. And with this, this really beautiful verse ends, verse 80.